Aaron will have to do her magic. There we go. We are recording. Hi, everybody. Hello, hello. Do you, me to, do you want me to start, Shelly? Sure, yeah, whenever okay. you're ready. Okay. <clears throat> well, hello, everyone. Thank you guys so much for being on the webinar, Manifest Your Rock and Bod. Um, this is, I'm Donna Hildebrand, and we have Dr. Shelly Prasad. For those of you guys who may not know one or the other, or both of us. Um, let's see, Dr. Shelly and I have known each other for six years now. Actually, longer than that, Shelly. It just took me a few years, it took me a whole year before I actually was willing to talk to you. But I actually knew you a year before that. <laughs> Christy, can you guys hear? Yes. Yeah. Oh, hi, Christy Tracy. I was actually asking my sister, Christy Brumman, if she could hear. Do a thumbs up, Christy. Christy Hall, if you can hear. Okay, cool. Um, so, Shelly is an amazing facilitator. She is a body expert. She's a Tantra facilitator. Right? Is that what you Tantra teacher, a chiropractor. So, she's been working with bodies for such a long time, and she knows bodies so well. But I would say, you know, from my experience of working with her, it's because she knows her body, her own body so well. And that her knowing of her own body is the gift that her body has been to my body for my body and I to know each other in such an intimate way. And that's how, that also bleeds out into every area of my life. It bleeds out into my massage practice when I'm touching bodies and working on them and allowing me to connect with them and my relationships with people and just on and on and on and on. Um, but I, you know, I met Dr. Shelley probably about seven years ago. She was doing, a, she came into town and she did a little local class and um, I enjoyed the class for what it was worth. I'm just going to kind of like be for real here for a second, Shelley, and kind of let everyone know how, <laughs> how you and I became friends and worked with one another. But um, actually I, I was just coming out of some really strong, like, deep-rooted belief systems that came from different religions um, that I've been in. And not that the religion is wrong or anything, I'm not saying that, but the belief system that I created and attached to from them definitely did not work for me and my body. And I com had completely shut my body down. Um, I did not, I hated my body. And I had a great body. I mean, it was fine. There was nothing wrong with it, but I did not like my body. Um, I wore the same exact thing every day. I wore the same exact jeans, the same exact t-shirt, the same exact flip-flops literally every day because I thought it was the only thing that looked good on me. And I had like six pairs of those jeans and I had 10 of those t-shirts and I had probably two different pairs of flip-flops. I'm not kidding. It was my uniform. <laughs> and um, I met Shelly at this class and I love the content of the class. I didn't really like Shelly though because <laughs> Shelly was too in my opinion, sexual. She's so connected to her body. She has no problem talking about everything with her body. And I just had a problem with it because it's like, from the, my point of view, it's like, how can you talk about these things? I mean, you know, and not only that, but she would talk about them nonstop. In my mind, I was just like, oh my gosh, if she says the word orgasm one more time, you know? So fast forward, I wanted to take some other classes that she did facilitate, but I actually tried to not take them from her. So I went to other people to take them and about a year later I was in a class and the facilitator in that class was talking, you know, he would joke around every once in a while about sex. And at the end of the, the class, which is a three day class, he said, wow, what is going on? Every time I joke around with someone about sex, like 20% of you kind of perk up like, Ooh, what are we talking about? And the other 80% of you completely check out. Now, let me give you a little back information, let you know that in my relationship with my husband, we weren't having sex. And that was the number one issue in our relationship. And to me, I saw it as an obligation. I did not get, I did not receive enough pleasure from it for it to be worth my time. It was one more thing I had to check off of my to-do list on my busy schedule. So I, I thought, you know, I just didn't need it. You know, it was like a burden for me. <clears throat> and I'm sure a lot of it had to do with also the way I thought about my body as well. I mean, I know that's the case now, 
But in this class, when he said that, he's like, what is it? Why are people checking out? And he goes, oh, it's because it's like you're missing out on something and you don't want to know you're missing out on anything. And I remember thinking, I'm not missing out on anything. I could go the rest of my life without having sex and it would be okay with me. But he asked a couple of other questions that day. And one of them was, what are you defending for or against? That if you wouldn't defend for or against it, you could have a life beyond anything you have ever imagined possible. So I went home with that question. Like, and I was like, hmm, okay. I am defensive about sex, for sure. I am defensive about the way I look and the clothes I can and can't wear and all that stuff. So I wonder, am I really missing out? And if I am missing out, then who knows what I'm pretending not to know that could make my life so unbelievable, so pleasurable, and so enjoyable, and could make me have so much more ease in my body because I had a lot of illnesses going on, like symptoms and stuff. And I was in the question, I was in the inquiry, and probably about two weeks of asking that question, all of a sudden, Shelly popped up in an email, and I was like, oh, Shelly, eh. you know, I was going to delete it, and my body was like, no, I could feel something in my body, and I go, oh, is it Shelly? Is Shelly the person who knows something that I'm pretending not to know that can help me unlock all of this? And my body was like, yes. And I go, oh, no, anybody but Shelly. But I... <laughs> One thing I did know is I knew how to ask my body questions at that point, and I was willing to trust my body. And my body said yes, and so I called her up. And I said, Shelly, these are all my point of views about my body. These are all my judgments about you. These are all my judgments about sex. These are all my judgments. I'm not committed to them. I'm just letting you know where I've come from, and I'm looking for someone who can help me break all this away so I can actually live my life. And she was just like, wow, that's the most vulnerable I've ever, like, if you'd looked at my list <laughs> and knowing that I'm con con contacting Shelly, someone who called herself an orgasmicologist, <laughs> she was like, wow, that you're so vulnerable. I can't believe it. And so anyways, that was the beginning of our conversations. And, and she started coaching me. She came to Dallas to do some different classes and whatnot. Um, Chrissy, can you bring my, uh, charger in here for my laptop, please? And, um, and one thing led to another, I got into some classes of hers and really started to dismantle all the judgments I had about my body. I started to dismantle all the judgments I had about sex, which absolutely has to do with receiving in your body. Um, and when I did that, not only did my, my sex life improve with my partner, but my capacity to connect with every human being on the planet and the bodies that were on my massage table just became like something I'd never experienced before, a profound connection. So, um, you know, just, I want to introduce you guys to this fabulous, amazing, beautiful woman who I love so much because she literally was the introduction for me to myself five, six years ago, whenever that was. And my life has never been the same. I am happier than I ever have been. I love my body and I love the capacities that my body has. So hi, Shelly. <laughs> Hi, Donna. I remember that day so clearly. I remember the phone call when you were like, okay, this is all, let me just lay it out. I judge you for this and this and this. And I'm just sitting here laughing going, yay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, thank you for hosting this webinar. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being drawn, vulnerable, and desiring to share your knowledge, share your story, and share what you know is possible now with bodies. For all these other beautiful women who are currently with us who are going to watch us post webinar because unfortunately it's like that thing that we judge the most whether it's your judgment of me years ago or our judgment of our body if we can let that go like how much can your body the thing that you're judging the most actually be the greatest contribution to you the same way you judge me the most but then i became the person who could be the greatest contribution to you in that moment so totally. Oh my gosh, that's so true. Sorry, I didn't interrupt you. That's okay. No, but how much can our bodies honestly be the greatest contributions to our life living reality? Not just, you know, the physical appearance like we talked about yesterday, but sex and pleasure and connecting. And I remember a powerful question I asked you. I was like, what would it take for you to be turned on in all areas of your life? What would it take for you to be turned on even when you're massaging a body? And how much is that going to transform your healing practice? And you're like, oh no, I can't do that. But even that was a judgment. But as we were 
through that, it was like, wow, it just opened up so much more space. And people were like, okay, when can I book with you next? I remember you telling me going, people are my clients are addicted to me now. Like, what is this? But that's the power of our bodies. We are capable of embracing this energy of no judgment, which is the most like delicious, juicy, loving, adoring, cherishing, nurturing energy that exists. And it's just, if we can show up for that with ourselves, then we can show up for that in that energy, in that space with our children, with our partners, with our clients, with our friends, with our family members, and be that invitation to a different possibility. Because we all have a body. We all are struggling with some sort of judgment. So how much the more you get out of judgment, you can be that contribution to other people to get out of judgment themselves, even if they're judging you. Because with bodies, it's an interesting thing. Like, I can't tell you how many times I could feel the judgment of somebody else judging me and my body. And it's like, wow, that's not even about me. That's their judgment. And that's about their body, whatever's going on for them. But the more, the more free you can be of your judgments, you create this space where they're like, okay, I'm judging her, but I also like her. Like, what is it about her? So you plant that seed of no judgment. You plant that seed of consciousness for them to then maybe choose, hey, what is it? What is it that you have? Why are you so happy? Why are you so free and flowing in your sensuality, your femininity with your body? You say orgasms. Like, you know, I can't, I do remember a couple of years ago, um, this girl had asked me, I was at a restaurant and she was the waitress and she was like, why are you so happy? Can I just ask you like, what is your secret? And it just came out, I'm like, uh, lots of orgasms. And she was like, like, blank stare. She never came back to my table after that. I had to call over another waiter, like, uh, can you bring me my chair? <laughs> <laughs> well, also, too, another thing that you um, taught me, because I had an had abhorrence to you saying the word orgasm so much, um, because I just didn't think that was something that should be talked about um, out loud as much as you like to talk about it out loud. But I also didn't realize that um, it's not, I mean, it is the actual act of having an orgasm and sex, but there's also an energy. So when you are in orgasm with Chrissy, um, I'm going to mute Chrissy's phone. Oh, Chrissy, Tracy, can you mute your phone? Um, when you are actually having an orgasm and sex, think about the energy that that creates for your body. And then what would it take for you to have that, the energy, that creative, that life force energy that and take that to every place in your life and then how would that transform your body so um that was really that was hard for me to hear in the beginning but the more i started playing with it and it didn't take very long i started to realize wow this is so much more than what i made it i made it so taboo and i made it all about i'm gonna say sex in the taboo sense but it's something so much bigger than that it's really like universal energy it's life force energy, it literally is the energy that creates life. And that's really was the invitation that you were asking me is what would it take for me to be turned on 24 seven? And um, yeah, that was just such an amazing gift. And I can turn myself on anytime. I can allow anything to turn me on too. I can feel that energy rush in my body when I'm out in nature with a tree um, or, you know, hugging my daughter. Now, some people would say, well, that's horrible. That's, that's disgusting and perverted for you to have that energy with your daughter. But I'm not having sex with her. I'm just having the energy of complete connection with her. And that's what orgasmic energy is. So um, I like to just say that because it kind of helps to just, you know, wash the surface of the judgments that we have about all those words so we can actually have a conversation and create something completely different with our bodies. Absolutely, because most people think sexual energy is having sex. It's the literal act of sex, but it's not. It is, like you said, it's life force, chi, kundalini. Every different culture has a different meaning for this energy that permeates every cell of our body. And if we can tap into that and embrace it and embody it and not make it wrong with all the sex habits, that, that's when we can actually see the gift that it is, and that's when we can actually use that energy too create, manifest, transform anything we want in our life because, I mean, we jumped right into like, manifest your rockin' bod. Let's talk about orgasms. I know. <laughs> we totally jumped away. <laughs> I was like, okay. So, yeah. So, how do we let go of judgments of our bodies so that we can manifest a rockin' bod? And also, like, what are all the other judgments we have about bodies that actually keep us from having 
a rock and bot, a body that we truly love and enjoy, um, like diets and forced exercise and all those things. I mean, yes, our bodies like to move, Shelly. So it's not like we can't ever move and expect to have a, an amazing body that really works and, you know, can have a lot of agility and skill to it. Um, so how do, how do we balance all that? How do we get out of those judgments and, and what else is possible with that? Exactly. Well, and a lot of people, if they look at me now, they would probably judge me like, oh, you've never judged your body a day in your life. But what they don't know is from the time I was 13, I started working out in the gym like three hours a day every day after high school. And I couldn't wait until I turned 18 so I could do fitness competitions because I had all these friends in the gym who were competing. And I thought, wow, okay, that's going to be the time when I actually achieve my perfect body, when I have a six pack, when I have ripped arms, when I have nice glutes and legs. So I was constantly striving for that perfect image of this perfect body of what I thought it was from a very, very young age. And looking back, like, of my young years, I remember a few times, you know, my mom made mention, oh, well, you know, boys aren't going to like you if you get cellulite, you better start running, you better start working out. So that was always kind of ingrained in the back of my mind. And then at one point, she did make mention like, oh, you're, you're starting to get a little pouch there in your belly, honey, like, you need to do something about that. So that's where that was my driving force to start working out in the gym at 13. And then that just became an addiction. It was like, okay, I got to have the perfect body. I got to have the six pack. So how do I get there? Okay, well, if I compete, if I put my body through that living hell of competing and dieting and being asleep at the gym and cutting down on everything to get to 5% body fat, then yay, finally I'll have the perfect body. So I did four years of competing, seven competitions. I won them all between first place and third place. And even on the day of competition, standing on stage with my tan and my six pack and my glutes, I still judged my body. It still wasn't good enough. Well, I got second place. That's not good enough. Or, you know, the judge would tell me, oh, well, your legs could be a little bit more defined. Your glutes could be a little tighter, a little higher. And I'm like, okay, back to the gym. Then literally the next day it was like, back to the gym. I have to go become perfect. So there is no, if you know what your standard of perfection is, you're never going to get there because once you get there, there's going to be a new standard of perfection that you're going to constantly keep yourself in a state of judgment, trying to get there to the next level, to the next level. And when I was in that world of bodybuilding, it was the unhealthiest world that I was ever in. Everybody in that world were, they had mental issues, emotional issues. They were very obsessed with their body image. And if you don't know anything about that world, like after you get off stage, you go and eat, and you eat and eat and eat until you literally look like you're pregnant. The next day in the gym, people would be like, Shelly, are, are you like nine months pregnant? Like, what happened? Like, two days ago, you had a six pack. And that started affecting me too because your body would blow up. And then that would send me into the spiral of, shit, I got to get back to my diet. I got to get back to the gym. I got to get back to having that six pack. And it became an unrealistic ideal that I was trying to live in to the point that I started punishing myself for cheating if I had a cheat day it was like oh no nine o'clock at night go to the gym 30 minutes of cardio because you just had a tiny piece of chocolate yeah. and it became it went to the point of if I I loved ice cream so I would literally eat ice cream and then just so I wouldn't eat the entire container I would go put it in the sink run water in the container put it in the garbage just so I wouldn't dig it out of the garbage and eat it because it was in such judgment. If I ate the whole container, I have to go to the gym and punish my body again because I just cheated. Wow. Last year of competing, I was like, what the fuck am I doing? Like, this is so unkind, mean. I'm torturing my body. I'm punishing my body. Most people would kill themselves to have a body that looks like mine. Yet at the same time, it still wasn't good enough. And it was a wake-up call when... And my very last, no, my second to last competition, my knee blew out on me. It completely gave out. And I tried to get out of the competition. And they're like, oh, no, you still have to come and enter. So kinesio tape, therapy, I did everything I could. I still had to go perform and put on a physical fitness performance, which I did. But, you know, like, that's how much I pushed myself. My body was screaming at me, stop, stop, stop. I changed my hormones. My hormones were all over the place. Adrenal fatigue. I was losing hair in the shower. I had cystic acne. So then not only was I judging my body for not having a six pack and being perfect, I had these big cystic pustules all over my face that everybody's like, what's wrong with you? 
which then made me go into more judgment of myself. So I just found myself in this vicious cycle of judgment and I literally felt like I was drowning. There was no way I could get out from underneath all that judgment. Um, and in chiropractic school, I came across this technique that was more energetic based and it just, at first I was like, oh, it's not working. And then the more I started studying and applying other techniques, I started Tantra, Kundalini, breath work. I started utilizing what I studied and like incorporating that into the adjustment table when I would get adjusted. And that's when I started feeling this sense of kindness for my body. And that's when I started deciding, you know what? Shit has to change. Like this is enough. I am tired of judging my body. I'm tired of being in this cycle, vicious cycle of this constant need to be perfect. I'm tired of punishing myself because it hurt. Like it literally was like, what the fuck are you doing? And I'm just like, if not now, when am I going to change? And then from that chiropractic technique, then I was introduced to access and the vibes and energy work, and it just started unfolding from there. And it literally, there was this one very powerful session that I had where the facilitator, he was holding my perineum in my head, and he was like, he whispered in my ear, you're beautiful. Do you believe that? And it was like, oh my God, I started crying. I was gushing. I was falling my eyes out. And I couldn't believe that I had this beautiful body. And I didn't actually believe I was beautiful. And it brought me to such tears that my body was actually crying. Like my body, I literally felt like my body was the one crying, not me. And from that day on, I literally committed to six months of all the tools and techniques that I could get my hands on to get rid of body judgment. And after that, it was like, I got no more judgment. So for anybody out there who's like, oh, it's not possible for me. I am so deep in judgment. It feels like it's impossible for me to wake up and never judge my body again. I can personally tell you, I was at the bottom of the bottom. Like my friends around me, we all kind of had the same quality and would throw it in the garbage. So when I started pulling out of that, they were like, oh, how is this difficult, Shelly? Like, really? I'm so deeply, that's such a habit it's an addiction it's bulimia it's anorexia it's over exercise disorder i still have like things competing who can't pull themselves out of it because it's mental it's I don't want to say disorder but it's just it's a mental addiction that ideal ideal is and but i can promise you that however impossible it feels it is possible to pull yourself out of that and it begins with one judging your body as easy as that may sound we have to just stop judging our body for whatever for the ideal physical appearance for the perfect age for the physical ability to go run or do whatever sport you enjoy because like you said Donna, our bodies were designed to move they were not designed to sit around and be sedentary they require movement so for me now working out is fun i still go to the gym i do yoga i do pilates i do a lot of different activities a lot more can I stop for just a second, Shelly? Can I stop you for just a second? I'm having a hard time hearing you. Alicia, can you mute your um, device, please? Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> okay, now I can hear you. <clears throat> the biggest thing that women need to look at is, are you doing any of these activities, going to the gym, yoga, dieting, juice cleanse, whatever, are you doing it because you love your body or are you doing it because you hate your body and you're looking to achieve this ideal state of physical appearance, ideal state of health, ideal state of whatever. And if you're yeah. in that state of doing something because you don't like your body to try to achieve a better state, not from a state of just loving your body and for the fun of it, you're always going to be in that cycle of judgment and you're never going to be able to pull yourself out of that. And that right there is step one. Do well, it because you love it, not because it's an obligation, not because you have to, not because you're in judgment. Yeah. It's, uh, your story is so similar to mine, Shelly. I, I too had been in judgment for so long and I also uh, decided, I know, I know what will help me have the perfect body. I'll get into figure competition. And I did that and it was brutal. And literally the day I got off the stage, like you said, we had a feast that was beyond Thanksgiving for three people, it was absurd. I think I had four full meals that night to make up for the starvation I put myself through, which totally spiraled me into a compulsive overeating addiction. 
for the next year, I was a compulsive overeater. Um, and I gained like, I don't know, I think 20 pounds in one month after my competition. But the worst thing is I didn't have a, a signal in my brain anymore that could tell me when my body was full. Like that's how disconnected I got from my own body by forcing this other perfection reality on it. Now, what I can say is that when I met you, I was probably about 20 pounds heavier than I am today. And I remember you saying, you know, what if you would be willing to show what your, what I, my biggest fear was people seeing that I had cellulite and you're like, what would, what would it take for you to be willing to show your cellulite? And I was like, Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> I mean that there's just no way, Shelly, I could not do it. But I also was willing to trust you, even though it didn't make sense to me that that was going to be the thing that would change my body. But we started with my biggest judgment. And she was like, I want you to wear shorts and show your cellulite. And it was so difficult. And I was doing it also with people who I definitely wouldn't want to have seen me, like people who had really good bodies, you know. And I did it. And I also practiced when I saw my cellulite and would go into judgment, I would practice putting my mind in a different place. That was the best I could do at that time. But what was so phenomenal, and you know, I don't know if this is gonna happen for every single person's body, and it doesn't matter if it does or not, because what's really important is that you just become profoundly connected and can start hearing your body again and, and just love your body. Um, but what did happen for me is that um, the more I was willing to show the parts of my body that I was, I was horrified to show because of my judgments about them, the more my body started to change. And literally within, I don't know, what was it like five weeks maybe? I dropped 20 pounds. I never went to the gym one time. I did not diet at all, but I was asking my body every day and every meal, what would you like to eat body? And I was willing to only put in my body what my body told me to put in. I was also asking my body every day, what would you like to wear? And if my body said, I want to wear that sundress. And I I, my, that sundress. <laughs> my point of view was I cannot wear a sundress while I'm doing massage because that would be too forward. Right. I had a lot of judgment about that, but I did. I was like, my body wants to wear a sundress. I'm going to wear a sundress. I'm going to get out of every, I'm going to let my body show me what's possible without any judgment. And I started wearing sundresses at work. And what was so interesting is that people weren't like, making me wrong for it. To my knowledge, they were like, wow, Donnie, you look so amazing. We've never seen you in a sundress. Like, wow, you look so happy. Wow, you're losing so much weight. What are you doing? You know, I mean, people were actually tipping me more. My client base started to increase. Like everything in my life just got better. And through that experience, I got connected to my body and I was like, wow, my body really has my back. My body really loves me. And then I didn't want to judge my body anymore. It's just like, I was unwilling to do it anymore because I could not, it's like if I had my child, right, constantly trying to give something to me. And then I was just like making her wrong for every single gift she was trying to give to me. Like if, you're, if your three-year-old brings you a coloring page, of course, it's not going to be the best, right? But it comes from the bottom of their heart. You wouldn't tell them that's a stupid coloring. And that's basically what I was doing to my body. I was making it so insignificant and there was so much magic behind it. Absolutely. And that is so like, it's hard for some people to do what you did. Like you were just like, you ripped that bandaid off where for me, it was like the six months. Cause it was so like literally for six months, I put sticky notes everywhere inside my fridge, inside every cupboard, like, body what would you like to eat so it was constantly there reminding me um but yeah oftentimes that judgment that you have of you is not even your judgment because we're all connected to this mass unconsciousness of judgment so we really have to stop and ask ourselves is this judgment of our body is it our judgment or is it society's judgment is it what every other woman on the planet is judging on their body so if you're the only one who's going to stop judging, let's say your cellulite, because every woman judges her cellulite, you're going to feel like the odd man out. You're going to feel different. You're going to be seen. You're going to feel like you're vulnerable. You're going to feel like you're naked for the entire world to not judge you, which is a very difficult thing to do. But I remember when you did that, literally, you're like, I'm ripping the fucking bandaid off. I'm just done with this shit. And that is when your body literally will transform like that. You have to get to that point 
that you and I got to where it was like, fuck this shit. I'm so done torturing my body. And when you make that decision to be like, -uh, no more, I'm done. Your body's like, thank you. It's like this, this musical notes to my ears. Like, what are we going to do now? Now that you're not going to touch my body. <laughs> It is. And you know, it may not happen over, your body may not drop 20 pounds in five weeks. It may not happen overnight. Um, but the joy that your body exudes and the connection that you have with your body over time, the more you practice that your body will just change a little more and a little more and a little more and a little more. I've seen it happen multiple times. It wasn't just with me. I've seen it happen so many times with so many people who I've helped coach through this as well. And it's just so cool. It's worth a try. It's so much better than being in the constant did it, did it, did it, did a turmoil and your brain that has you completely exit being alive. Exactly. Yeah. I had last year, one of my assistants who was working for me, she just took all my tools that I gave her. She put them to use. And literally one day she sent me a message late at night. She's just like, she's like Oh my God, I got to tell you this. Can't wait till we get to the office tomorrow. She's like, I just lost 10 pounds in one week and I did nothing. Like, what is this possible? Like, what the fuck? Oh my God. I did nothing different except using all the tools that you gave me. And I'm like, yep, yeah, that's possible. But even for me, my last little piece of judgment that was hanging on there until the very end, I was always, I always had this like bloating thing. After every meal, I get bloated and it's like, I tried probiotics and enzymes and I did everything that you're technically supposed to do gluten-free, raw, vegan, vegetarian, you name it, tried it, been there, done it, nothing helped this bloating thing. Until one day I realized, okay, I have to divorce my mom. Like as hard as it's going to be, I have to divorce her. I have to let go of all this mental and emotional baggage that is keeping us connected because energetically you're connected to your mother at your stomach, at your belly button. That's where you were connected to her. Literally, I wrote her a letter, divorced her. Okay, you know what, mom? I'm done. Da, da, da. This is how I feel. This is what I've always wanted to say to you. The moment I made that decision to completely cut the cord, disconnect myself from her, send her the letter. Okay, we're good. The next morning, I woke up and my husband was like, your stomach is really flat. Like, well, what did you do? And then he's like, wait, what did you lose? What did you get rid of? What did you cut off? And I was like, I don't know. Like, wow. Oh my God, that's incredible. And I can't tell you how many women I've worked with where when they let go of that emotional baggage from a toxic relationship and when they've like truly decided I'm letting this go, it's no longer going to affect me. It's no longer going to have control over me and my body. They've shed weight like instantaneously. Like I think in the classes we did, Donna, years ago, Lisa, she, remember that day she came in the next day and she's like, my jeans, these like just came fresh out of the dryer. They're two sizes bigger than normal. Like, what happened but she had a huge transformation in the class the day before and she let go of all of that emotional baggage because yeah. one of the things with judgment or with any kind of mental toxicity whether it's judgment negative thoughts words things we're holding on to the past that we're holding on to all of those thoughts feelings emotions they intersect our cells and they actually change them and they change them from being that spherical state of ease to an elliptical, a state of disease, and then your body starts changing as well to the point that it can literally physically manifest disease of the body. And you can change that instantaneously. So any disease or symptom is just your body talking to you. It's your body telling you, hey, you need to analyze and figure out what this is and you need to let it go. You need to listen to me. Absolutely. And I've even found like some of my, dis the disease that I experienced in my body is actually a potency. So for me, and like a potency is your capacity to change something. So my body will manifest a dis-ease, a broken foot like I have right now, right? Um, but also some other things too. And your body's just, it's like your body gives you these whispers all the time. We all know what the whispers are like, but we disregard the whispers. And then our body has to get a little louder and a little louder. And then it actually creates disease. But behind every dis-ease is a potency. It's an invitation to change something. And so if you can look at, if this disease was talking to me right now, what would it be saying? So for me, um, when I broke my foot, I was clear my body was saying, I need a fucking break. And so it took it, literally. Literally. 
So, and sometimes I have asthma that shows up. And when that shows up, it's like, if I look at what my body's saying, it's like, I'm suffocating. And I have to look at, okay, what in my life feels suffocating to me? And then I have to look at that area and go, okay, that area has to change now. And when I start to change that area of my life, the breathing opens up again. So these are really cool ways that we can actually use our body's dis-ease and symptoms to help us change what needs to be changed in our life to make everything better, not just our body, but our whole life better. Absolutely. But if judgment is there, we're never going to be clear about what it is. Like with that bloating that I had gone through and even recently I had a little bit of bloating and I was like, what's going on here, body? And it was just a moment of stress with my office and a lot of transformation as I'm expanding and growing my office. But I was allowing the stress to physically affect my body and my body was just asking for it. No, just make decisions. Just do it. Just jump, no matter what it looks like. No matter, you don't have to go through and digest it and process it. Make sure it's a right fit. Like, just jump. And if it doesn't work out, like it hasn't worked out twice. The universe had my back within a week. It was like, yep, bye bye, gone. That person's not right for you. Yep, bye bye. They're like, the universe has my back. So it's like, stop digesting and processing all the shit. Just decide. Just jump. Just do it. We'll take care of you. And it's like, oh, okay. I was stressing about figuring it out, which then created bloating again. When I just had to just trust my intuition, trust my gut instinct and just go and do it. But again, if we're stuck in the judgment of, oh no, what do I have? And what's what I need to take medicine? I need to do this. And you're now fitting into society and what they tell you. Oh, you have this. Therefore, you need to do this, 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 and this. That's judgment. So you're not going to listen to your body. You've completely created a disconnect between what your body's telling you and what what you're doing, what you're searching for, you know, Dr. Google, okay, Google, tell me, what do I have? All yeah. of that is based on judgment. That's not based on the truth of what your body's telling you. <clears throat> so. Yeah. Cool. So uh, the three roadblocks, we were going to share with people the three roadblocks. Uh, what are those? I mean, we've said them, but maybe we could just say them. We've said them all, but maybe we can just like kind of pinpoint them so people can kind of hear them cognitively. <laughs> exactly. Well, the first one, our mind is our own worst enemy in multiple ways, not just with judgment, but again, in our sex life as well. Our mind is keeping us from being present. Our mind was designed to be a machine to process things. And now we literally have created it as our best friend, but really it's not our best friend. It's our enemy. So judgment lives in our mind. So as long as our mind is active with judgment, we're no longer present. We're not connected, like I said, with that gut instinct. The judgment is clouding my connection with my body. I'm listening to this. I'm not listening to this. So we're not actually able to be present with our body, which is really all our body wants. The moment you're present with your body and you're out of your mind, the moment you're like, wow, you can actually adore your body. You can actually see it for what it is, not for what you're expecting it to be. So how do we get out of judgment of our mind? Well, there's a lot of different techniques and tools that you can do. Find one that works for you, whether that's interesting point of view. When you look in the mirror, like, wow, why am I judging my body here? That's an interesting point of view that I have about my body. You can also focus, there's another one that I like, like the kaleidoscope. So every time you look in the mirror, focus on a beautiful part of your body, a body that you're grateful for. And envision that when you're looking at that part of your body, you're looking into a kaleidoscope. And you know when you look into a kaleidoscope, it's like there's that one image, but then it fractals out into a million other beautiful images. So if you can focus on that one part of your body that you love, that you're grateful for, that you adore, and then envision that it's a kaleidoscope, eventually that is just going to overflow and fill up your entire body so that then you view your entire body as being beautiful which takes you away from that space of judgment. Now you're into a space of gratitude for your body. You can actually see a part of your body that you love instead of that part of your body that you judge. And before you know it, because you're no longer paying attention to that part of your body that you judge, it's just going to slowly start changing or it'll change pretty fast. So it does. It does that for sure. Yeah. And the less, you know, with that, I know we're talking about fast transformation and it can happen overnight. But I've also had a lot of clients who are like, oh, the tools aren't working. Whatever homework you gave me, it's not working. I'm still judging my body. And my biggest advice there is don't give up. It's been years of judging your body. It's now a habit. It's like brushing your teeth every morning. It's on automatic pilot. You wake up and immediately you judge your body. Like yeah. you have to give yourself that time. That's why I gave myself six months. You know, I had someone ask the question just a couple of days ago, 
uh, if for people who are who know how to ask their body questions and really hear it um, and if you don't know how to do that then just start playing with it like any anything just ask your body about anything and everything all the time the more you ask it the louder it will get because it's like oh you want to know what I have to think you know but um, the question that someone posed was um, ask your body how long would you need to be out of completely out of judgment with it for it to change the thing you're looking to change and get an idea of the energy of what that what that might take uh, and it kind of give you a little bit of feedback like yeah I mean I've been judging my body for 40 years of when I met you you know so it either took a drastic like ripping off the band-aid or it would have taken you know some time one of the two absolutely and we oftentimes get so caught up in wanting to see the fast transformation that we also miss the smaller transformations that are occurring that if we can be more present again get out of our mind and into our body we'll be able to see those smaller transformations and the more you can see those and actually express gratitude for them the quicker your body is going to transform as well but if we're so focused on seeing that big grand massive transformation you're still going to be in a state of judgment so in your process of letting go of your mind and becoming more present, connected to your body, you're going to have to like constantly analyze, am I missing what's showing up in front of me? You know, an easier analogy would be, you're so focused on manifesting, let's say a thousand dollars, that because a thousand dollars hasn't showed up, but 800 of it has, you're still focused, no, the a thousand hasn't, you're missing out, you're not showing gratitude for the 800 that has already showed up. Or because we've decided it has to show up in a certain way. Well, because it came in a different package, it showed up as, you know, a telephone, like a new cell phone or whatever, which has a value of $800. Somebody gave it to me. Well, that's not the $1,000 that I asked for. Well, you didn't have to spend the 800 on the cell phone. So we have to let go of all those judgments of how it's going to show up, when it's going to show up, why it's going to show up, what it may look like when it shows up, and all the uncomfortableness that we may have to go through to get it to show up. Because I know for you as well as for me, it was a pretty uncomfortable journey. We had to do a lot of uncomfortable shit. We had to step outside that comfort zone into the unknown to actually like hand over full control to our body to be like, body, I trust you here. Yeah. Like, uh, so there were days I really had to saturate in the um, discomfort of choosing to show my cellulite. But in saturating in that discomfort of, let me, let me rephrase it. I was saturating in the discomfort that I had about not wanting to show my cellulite. But the longer I saturated, I'm like, dang it, this is just too exhausting. I'm just going to do it. Like you start to get clear of like what's going to show up on the other side or, or what you're just maintaining, which is misery. It's just, it becomes not worth it anymore. No, absolutely. And that, again, is that point. It's, I call it that bucket point. You've got to get to that bucket point where you're like, you know what? I'm done suffering. I'm done saturating in the uncomfortableness. Like, let me just fucking rip that Band-Aid off. Why not? Like, what am I waiting for? If not now, when? Um, but coming back, there was one other little thing that I wanted to mention on. If we look at that judgment, Oftentimes a question I ask is what comes first, the body that you're judging, let's say your cellulite, or is it your judgment of the cellulite? It's like, which comes first, the chicken or the egg? And literally quantum physics has proven it's the judgment of the cellulite that shows up first before your actual cellulite. So the more you change your judgment and stop judging, the cellulite's not gonna be there because you're no longer projecting that into your reality and popping it into your physical reality, which is your illusion. So you're no longer creating cellulite. So the more you can stop judging it and having that thought that it's there, the less you're going to see it in the mirror, which is then going to contribute to a different cycle where it's like, okay, the less you see it, the less you judge it, the more you're grateful for the beautiful legs that you do have. Yep. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's true it's true guys okay so our mind that's the one that's the number one roadblock yes the second one is femininity it's connecting with that we have a female body so every body on the planet has masculine and feminine energy however 
us women have decided to become a little more masculine for many, many, many reasons. And we've disconnected from our feminine energy, but we all have it inside of us. And what happens when we've disconnected from the feminine energy, because let's say we've made it wrong, we've made it inferior, we've made it submissive, we made it all those things that we may judge that we don't want to be viewed as because we want to be viewed as dominant, productive, successful, this, that, da, 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 da. So that judgment has now created us to create a separation from our femininity. And that energy, that feminine energy is your nurturing energy. It's that motherly energy. It's that caring, the TLC, it's you being intimate with your body. So when we've disconnected from that, you become more masculine, which is the analytical driven, go, 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 go. I have to do this and this and this to get here. And that's where I was functioning from. Like I said, I grew up in the gym. I didn't have any girlfriends. I always surrounded myself with guys. So I became very masculine, literally to the point of doing sex like a man as well, where it was like, yeah, I've got sexual needs, wants, and desires. I'm not going to have emotions with sex. I don't want your phone number. I don't even need to know your name. Like, we just met in a bar. You want to go home? Like, that's how I did sex because career, fitness competition, like, no, I got shit to do tomorrow. And you got to go because I got to get up and do my 5 a.m. party, though. So I had become so masculine that I literally wasn't capable of even doing relationships with a partner until I started connecting and like tapping back into my feminine energy and relaxing into that and being with it and not judging and not making it wrong and not judging that I have to be masculine to be successful, to make money, to take care of everything I need to take care of. And when I embraced that feminine energy, that's when my body really was like, <sighs> like, thank you. We don't have to be so go, 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 go anymore. We don't have to be that hustle and bustle of New York City. We can now be that energy of Hawaii. We can relax. We can go with the flow. We don't have to force anymore. So that is such a huge contribution to your body, just to be that feminine energy, to connect, to make time, to nurture your body, to give it what it wants, to listen to it and be like, oh, you want to go do yoga or you want to do, or you want to take a day off? You want to just go play and tap into pleasure? And then your masculine part of you is going to be like, no, 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 we have shit to do. We got bills to pay. We got this, 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 this. But when you can actually just listen to your femininity and be like, okay, you know what? No, I'm going to take a day to just go play. You actually create more. You get more shit done. You get more productive. You attract more clients. That money that you are worried about actually shows up. And your body actually starts transforming because it's like, ooh, this feels good. We can actually just be instead of do. You know, that's so funny because I'm looking, I'm remembering back to whenever I was really working with you a lot, you know, in the beginning and you had me playing a lot. You were like, nope, go play, go play, go play. And then I started dating too. I, my relationship with my husband had come to an end and I started dating and um, I met my current husband now and I took a weekend to go play with him when I had a million things to do. And I just remember like the day that I was coming home from playing all weekend, I was getting on the plane early that morning because I had to be at my daughter's graduation from elementary school, like at 3.30. And I'd left my uh, license and something at my boyfriend's house at the time, which is my husband now. And um, it totally screwed up my whole day. And I remember it completely fretting for a little while that I'm going to miss my daughter's graduation. That's what I get for playing. That's what you get. You played too much, Donna. That's what you get. But luckily, I was in coaching with you. So I also quickly transitioned back and got out of that whole, like, I've got to control this and make this happen this way, this one way I know it's going to happen. I stepped into asking some questions. Okay, like, what else is possible? Letting my body relax. I went back to my um, boyfriend's house. We just like hung out in the hammock and cuddled until my, the next flight was available, which was like three hours later. And interestingly enough, I didn't see how I was going to make it work, how it was all going to kind of unfold, but it unfolded so beautifully, Shelly. I was able to get on a different plane, have extra time with him, get on a different plane. I got home with just enough time to, um, you know, get to my daughter's graduation, I actually arrived 30 minutes early and I got a gift for it at the airport. It was like, it actually was just like, here you go. No, you need a gift. There's a gift to the airport. No, you need this. Like if you're willing to see what else is possible, then other possibilities will show up. Totally. And that's one thing I love the most about learning from you about feminine energy is that it's about going with the flow and being in question, not in control, but in question and allowing things to just come to you like receiving. 
Yeah, and that's the key right there, not being in control because out of all the women I've worked with, we all have this tendency of being control freaks. And we do it with our bodies as well. That's why we're so addicted to judgment. That's why it feels so hard to let it go because no, that's my control. At least I feel I can control something if I'm judging my body because if I stop judging my body, then what the fuck do I do? And I remember like when I was stopping judging my body, when I was tapping into my feminine energy, there were days where I would walk into the gym and I just look around like, what do I do? I didn't have that like, okay, you're going to do these four exercises and these four sets and 12 repetitions. Like all of that just wasn't there. I was like, okay, body, what would you like to do? And for a moment, there was this space of stillness. There was this space of the unknown where I didn't hear anything and my body didn't really give me an answer and I didn't really know what to do. I just felt so uncomfortable. Like, wow, I don't know what this space is. This is foreign to me. But the more you step into that and play with that, the more you can actually create more and the more you actually realize, wow, that the form and structure of how I used to control my life actually didn't work so well for me. The more I just let go of control and let it come, like pun intended as well, like let it come, surrender to it. Mm -hmm. That's when you actually start creating, whether it's a body, a life, a financial reality that you absolutely love and adore because it's almost like you are you're no longer punishing yourself with the control. So now you're actually allowing yourself to receive the reward of just flowing. So it opens up so many new doors of possibilities to receive, which is a whole nother webinar conversation because just receiving alone is, like I said, that's a whole nother topic. But that then ties into the third roadblock. <laughs> full circle, full circle, ha ha. <laughs> And that third roadblock is we're not tapping into that sexual energy. We're not allowing ourselves to play in that orgasmic energy. And it's not just having sex all the time because you could have sex every single day and you're still not awakening and tapping into your sexual energy and using it to transform your body. Because what happens is sexual energy is always there. Your body was born with it. Children have it. It's in every living plant, animal, organism. But what happens is because it's sexual energy, it comes alive during sexual excitation, whether it's arousal, turn on, or actually during sex or masturbation. But what happens is it's not aware of that energy because we're not connected to our body, we're not present, we're not breathing, we're in our minds thinking of, oh my God, does my partner like my body? Is my partner judging my cellulite or my back fat flabbing around? You know, I need to have sex with the lights off so my partner doesn't judge my body. So we're in that state of control. We're in that state of judgment. We're in our mind. We're also, you know, we have that to-do list going on of, oh shit, I don't have enough time. The kids are going to be home or this, I got to do that, I got to do that. So our mind is constantly active, which is roadblock number one. And that's preventing roadblock number three, which is your sexual energy from actually awakening. So how we do sex in society today is actually wrong because we're not allowing our full potential of sexual energy to awaken. We have sex. We may or may not have an orgasm, and if we do have an orgasm, oftentimes we're forcing it into existence by contracting our muscles and pushing that orgasm out of our body, which then means we're losing that sexual energy, and then after sex, we're not doing anything to integrate that energy, to flow it through our body. So it's like it comes alive for that brief moment, it's a fleeting moment, and then it goes back to sleep. And in Tantra, they actually call it like the sleeping dragon. It's, it's a sleep that kundalini energy comes alive. And when it comes alive, it moves up the back of your spine like a snake and down the front of your body. So you have to learn how to flow it through your body to then allow it to awaken your chakras, to heal your body, to transform your body, to make you have all those other types of orgasms that are possible for your body, not just that, you know, contract and push your orgasm out of your body. But when you start tapping into that sexual energy, Donna, you can probably say it, like your body feels so different because you're no longer in that state of judgment. You're now connected to your body. You're allowing your body to receive that feeling of sexual energy. You're then moving it, you're playing with it. And for hours, if not days on end, your body is still in that state of turn on, of moving that energy. And that's when your body is going to start transforming. Yeah, I remember when I first started really playing with that energy and letting my body 
you know, be, um, receive it. I remember actually sending you a message saying, I, I can't hit, it's too much. I, I feel too, it was like I had 10 cups of coffee. I mean, it was just like, it was too overwhelming. That's how long I had been, well, my whole life I had been detached from it, I think. I don't remember ever feeling that. Maybe moments, right? Like you said, there are moments where we let it come up. Uh, a new relationship, you know, you kind of willing to play with that energy and be flirty and whatever. But like, it was so prominent in my body that, it was overwhelming, but I also wasn't willing to let it go because I was like, wow, okay, I got a lot of energy here. What can I do with this energy? And I started using that energy to create things in my life. And I started using, asking my body, okay, body, use this energy to you know, have this show up or to change this thing or whatever. So you can ask the energy to do lots of things for you too. Um, but yeah, it was just, it was overwhelming because it was so it was so much, but it was so good <laughs> too. And yes, I've seen this with so many people too. I watched this, my sister's there in the, in the uh, other room and I watched her and, and the other girls there too. Like all of them, they've, when they've tapped into that energy and they really started playing with it more and more and more, their bodies did start to change, but their whole lives started to change. Like ultimately you just start radiating joy more than anything. You just radiate joy. Yeah, and if we look at why that is so, when we reach that state of orgasm at that peak, that climax, your brain literally shuts off. The prefrontal cortex of your brain literally shuts off. You're in a deep state of meditation. Your brain waves slow down. You can't have any thoughts, and there's only two times in your life when you can actually reach that deep state of meditation, it's, and it's through orgasms and laughter. So when you're in that state of awakening that sexual energy, whether it's from having an orgasm, or once you've learned how to awaken the sexual energy, then you can actually awaken it anytime, anywhere. You don't even need to masturbate or have sex. But when that energy starts awakening, it starts slowing down your brain waves. And there have actually been studies between um, Montauk Chia, he teaches Taoist techniques. They actually studied his brain waves with those of Buddhist monks who literally spent 20 years in a cave meditating. And the Buddhist monks, when they come out of the cave, it's like their brain waves go back to normal because they're now in physical reality. So they can only maintain that state of deep meditation while they're in meditation. Whereas Manta Chia, because he's utilizing all these different techniques to awaken his sexual energy and flow it through his body, and that's what Tantra and Taoism teaches, his brain waves, as he's in reality, as he's working, moving, doing, being, his brain waves actually stayed in that deep state meditation. So you literally can become a walking, talking meditation because that energy is so healing and it calms your mind. So it literally helps to shut off your mind, which is going to shut off the judgment. And when you're in that, think about it. Like the last amazing, juiciest orgasm you've ever had, could you judge your body in that moment? No, it's impossible. <laughs> it's impossible. Like the energy of turn on and judgment cannot exist together. So also, so also too, in that, that, that juicy orgasmic state, when you just had a, the most amazing orgasm and you're so connected with your body in that moment, because that's just what it, it creates. Um, there's a sense of gratitude, right? Mm -hmm. And again, you can't have the judgment and the gratitude either at the same time. Totally. Yeah. And I mean, it's the same, like whether you're laughing or orgasm, like when you're laughing, even think about that, when you're laughing, like undiluted laughter from your belly, like you're almost being your pants kind of laughter. Can you stress about how much money's in your bank account, what your body looks like? Like, again, you can't. So your brain has slowed down, but it's from that state that you can create anything and everything. It's from that state that Napoleon Hill talks about that all of these geniuses in society, they use that state of turn on, that excitement, that arousal, that awakening of their sexual energy to manifest and create their ideas, their inventions, their books, their wealth, their paintings, their art, their music. Yeah. So if you think about it in his book, it's, there's a whole chapter on sexual transmutation. But again, it's not just sex. It's awakening of that sexual energy. And for example, one last little thing that I wanted to mention is when you look in the mirror, can you be turned on by your body? Like, can you look at your body, not from a conceited place, but from a place of, wow, I am so turned on by my body that I would love to just have sex with my body. 
I would love to just be with it and touch it and play with it. If I was my partner, I would be so grateful to be in a relationship with me because that energy that you have for your body is like, wow, I would love to have sex with me right now. That energy is what transforms your body because your body is like, oh, really? Woo! Yes. Also too, Alicia was just saying in the comment section that when she's embodying orgasmic energy, um, that it completely gets rid of any anxiety or depression for her. Oh, absolutely. There's a million health benefits for embracing and embodying that orgasmic energy. Because again, you're, you're increasing and enhancing and releasing all these chemicals in your body, the happy chemicals, the love drug, the dopamine, like you're, in, you're increasing all these chemicals that make you feel joyful. So then your body, like you said, your body starts radiating it. So then people are naturally drawn to you because it's either they're drawn to you who's this beam of orgasmic sexual energy, or they're drawn to somebody who's taking medication, they're depressed, they're stressed, their energy, their vibration of their body has dropped at a lower frequency and it doesn't radiate, it doesn't glow. It's not that, like I call it, it's the orgasmic glow. Yeah. So it's like, who would you be drawn to? You know what's so interesting that I just kind of had this awareness because we were talking earlier about how I said when I first started really embodying that orgasmic energy and receiving it, I told you it was too much for me. And I, I, I thought I need to turn it down. I need to turn it down a little bit because I can't, I don't, I'm out of control, right? Um, but I was unwilling to. And it made me realize what you just said. When you're being that state of that orgasmic state and you're radiating, you're going to attract other people who are also radiating who are attracted to that you're not going to attract other people who are going to bring you down because they're not going to be attracted to you actually you're going to be too much for them and that's why you were too much for me in the beginning i couldn't even take you <laughs> i had to like go the other direction <laughs> i'm glad that i for you anymore <laughs> so, i can't get enough <laughs> but yeah but that is unfortunately that is going to be a roadblock for women in transforming their body, that fear of being too much, too seen, too vulnerable, too naked for the world to judge, because that feeling of being judged by others for being too much, it's uncomfortable. You're, you will lose friends, you will lose family members, you will feel disconnected, you're going to feel like the black sheep. So oftentimes people use that feeling of being the black sheep to stop them from transforming, to stop them from continuing on their journey of expansion and I've seen it so many times people are like right there about to like expand and then oh, no, I don't want to do that I don't want to do that okay. awesome well you know what we wow there's so much here I mean we just told you guys a lot in an hour um, and we've touched on three really amazing things right getting out of your head getting out of judgments um, tapping into your femininity and the flow getting out of control. And then thirdly, um, you know, looking at how do you embody orgasmic energy all the time. And, uh, those are like, there's a lot to each one. These are just sort of like, we're just introducing you to them, but you can take what we've said and actually start playing with it and start to see what we're talking about. But, um, I am bringing Shelly here in Dallas. She's coming to Dallas in October and uh, we're going to be offering, uh, well, Shelly's going to be offering a three hour Tantra um, class for singles or couples. So if you're in a couple relationship, bring your partner and play with each other's bodies. It's fully clothed. It's not going to be weird. It's really just about connecting with bodies and starting to understand how you can transfer the energy back and forth between bodies. You don't even have to touch each other to transfer. Once you learn that, you don't have to touch people. You can already start transferring the energy back and forth without even connecting through touch. But when you can do that and connect through touch, wow, like it's so amazing. But you don't have to have a partner to get the benefit of this and to also, you know, like be able to, you don't have to bring a partner to the class in order to learn how to do it. So whether you're single or not, come to that class because that will really start to give you a sense of this flow as well. You know, like letting go of control, all of that, embodying the orgasmic energy, feeling the energy in your body, start to change the molecules in your body. It's really, really cool. And then also a full day on body, like getting out of judgment, getting out of your mind, body image, transforming the way we see our bodies and all the science that you bring forth. Shelly, you have so much amazing information that really helps us to see not just from 
okay, an energetic place, but also a logical place too. And you, you, you have this really brilliant way of merging the two together for us to where it just clicks. And I love that. So that's like a full day class. Um, after that class, you will not judge your body. Like you will not leave that class judging your body. And then thirdly, um, a full day uh, class called Pleasure Quest, looking at uh, how to use a yoni egg. Uh, you talk about that because talk about that for just a minute. Yeah, well, one of the, my favorite way and one of the easiest ways for women to stay turned on all the time is with a yoni egg. And every woman needs a yoni egg. It should be her absolute birthright. Like, honey, here you go. You just started your menstrual cycle. Here is your gift, a yoni egg. Because what happens is, as women, our pelvic floor muscles are super important for our sexual health. And in 99% of women, they're weak. You don't have to have a baby to actually have weak pelvic floor muscles and suffer from incontinence and prolapse and all those unwanted un un weak pelvic floor symptoms. Because even from training and doing too many deadlifts and squats, my pelvic floor muscles started getting weaker and weaker. And I noticed even jumping rope, it was like, what the fuck am I like do I feel like I have to pee like this is not normal in my early 20s no babies this isn't good um but I also struggled from competing I also struggled with horrible menstrual cramps ovarian cysts the doctors told me you're never gonna have kids you've got polycystic ovary syndrome blah 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 so the yoni a has been the biggest contribution to my life my body my sexual energy and healing all of those sexual things that were going on after one month of using my yoni egg, no more menstrual cramps, like none, zero, zitch. I was like, no, this can't be possible. Is this too good to be true? So I did my own little experiment. I stopped using my yoni egg for a month, and guess what? Menstrual cramps came back. So I was like, okay, the only thing different was the yoni egg. So I was like, okay, baby, come on, give me back that yoni egg. But what happens is with weak pelvic floor muscles, they act as a hammock between our pubic bone in front and our coccyx, coccyx in the back. And those are your first two chakras. That is your sexual energy. That's your root. That's your source of life. So when those muscles are weak, not only does it create prolapse and incontinence, it also affects your flow of energy and all of your meridians. It affects your chakras. They get blockages, which then also creates the physical manifestation of sexual diseases like low libido, hormonal, hormonal problems, um, the cysts, like I mentioned, endometriosis, all those other things that we just, we don't want, but nobody really talks about it. I've had so many women go to their gynecologist, doctors, hormone doctors. Oh no, just take this pill. Oh, you need hormone replacement therapy. At 20, how old was I? 24, 25? They're like, oh, you need hormone replacement therapy. Um, excuse me? At 24, 25 years old, I am not starting hormone replacement therapy. And that's when I had found the yoni. So it's an amazing practice. Every woman needs it. And you're going to notice, like, you just live turned on. And it's for any woman, any age, even if you're postmenopausal. I've had women in their 70s and 80s start using it who were told, your sexuality is dead. Like, bye-bye, no more. You can't have sex anymore. It's, there's cobwebs in there. <laughs> and a solution because coconut oil was not enough. And literally a couple weeks after all of these 70 to 80 year old women started using it, they were like, oh my God, Shelly, I've got a new boyfriend. I'm having sex. Like, this is incredible. I even had recently here in Mexico, a couple months ago, I had this lady come to my class. This is just an incredible, beautiful story. She brought her two 20 year old daughters with her. And at the end of the class, she was like, okay, ladies, I am here because I'm divorced. And I know I'm divorced because I had cut off my sexuality. I hated sex. I couldn't have an orgasm. Got into Catholic and I don't want my two daughters to repeat the same pattern that I did. I don't want them to end up unhappy. So she's like, I'm here, and that's why I'm buying a Yoni egg, and I'm going to start on this practice. So the next month, I did another short little intro teaser class. She came back before the start of the class. She's like, okay, can I just like share my little story? And I'm like, sure, yeah, absolutely. And then I almost cried because she's like, ladies, I'm 53. She's like, in one month, I started using the Yoni egg. I taught myself not just how to have an orgasm, but I actually can squirt. I can actually ejaculate. I manifested a boyfriend who doesn't live here. He lives in Guadalajara, so I don't have to see him all the time, which for me is the best relationship ever. 
He's like, and look at me. Like literally everybody in the class was like, you look like you're 10 years younger. What happened to you? You don't look 53 anymore. You look like you're in your forties or thirties. She's like, yep. Thanks to that little yoni egg. So it keeps your energy awakened. It gets that energy flowing through your entire body. It keeps you wet. It increases your sensitivity. So you can actually expand into all those other amazing types of orgasms. And you don't need sex to have orgasms. Like I've had women who have literally had an orgasm sitting at a table, selling timeshare with clients in front of them. They message me after like, Shelly, oh my God, I just had an orgasm with my egg inside of me. And I got to stay out. Like, <laughs> so, so awesome. that class is going to be on pleasure and why women have created a disconnect from pleasure and how we can take back that power. Yeah. It's interesting. I think in general, in, in society, it's okay for men to have sexual pleasure, but it's like wrong or dirty or something like that for women too. I think that a lot of that is starting to change, honestly, because I see a lot more people that don't have that point of view. Um, like I grew up with it anyways, you know, so I hope that there's a, it's starting to be a really big shift in that way. But for those of us who haven't had that shift yet, this is an amazing, amazing class to take. Um, I just wanted to read something really quick that Alicia said too. She says, I also just recently got rid of a toxic person in my life and started using uh, orgasmic energy again and lost 15 pounds in under a month. She's like, Dr. Shelley is the real deal. It really does work amazingly. Ha ha. I sound like a commercial, but really it's no joke. I just love Shelley and all I've learned. It's so true, Alicia. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Alicia. Bust out that yoni egg. I know she has one. <laughs> I know Christy has a yoni egg. How's your yoni egg, Christy? I don't think we can hear them, unfortunately. No. She can come in here and talk about it if she wants to. <laughs> so, yeah, so lots of really cool things. I mean, um, that's like almost two months away. So there's so many tools we can start playing with. And Shelly, you have some am amazing tools on your website, um, blueprints that you can download that kind of give you some information, um, little e-courses, um, um, big e-courses. Or you can come in person with Shelly because I'll tell you what, you know, talking to Shelly was one thing, but when I got one-on-one -on -one with her in person and actually could, her body could actually show me my body and energy, like being in, in the same room together, that actually catapulted everything that I had learned from her just through working on the phone or through the computer or through an e-course or something like that. So I highly recommend that for everyone to give that to themselves to come and work with us and Shelly, like in a classroom setting, get a tribe, a local tribe of people who really have your back in the realm of, yeah, getting out of your mind, not judging your body, tapping into your feminine energy, and absolutely having as much pleasure as you desire in life. It's just such a phenomenal way of living. It is. And, you know, just like what you've been posting on Facebook, Donna, if any of you are mothers or if any of you are around children, nieces, nephews, you have to be that example. You have to be that inspiration and show them because they're looking at you and going, oh, it's okay to judge your body. And they start wiring that program of judgment into their brain before they're six years old, 10 years old. And then it just runs subconsciously in the back of their brain. And literally 50% of 10 year old girls have been on a diet. Like what? Really? Yeah. What? Why? You know, on the, con on the contrast of that, my daughter has been raised since she was four. I taught her how to ask her body questions. And also starting at age four, I taught her how to honor her, her body, not just through um, t telling her, always honor your body, baby, but also by being the example, by honoring my body. And then, of course, I honor her body. If she asks me a question, I'm like, I don't know. What does your body say? And I don't care if her body says, she wants a bowl of chocolate syrup. If her body says that, I'm like, then you better eat a bowl of chocolate syrup. And we've played those games before with each other. Um, and so like, meaning I've, I've let her body totally have this. I always let her body have to say, I will never doubt her body because that's the best gift I could give to her, a connection to her body. Her body's going to be with her way after I'm long gone or way after she's long gone for me. So if she, I know that if she has that connection with her, she will be a more confident woman and able to take on anything she wants to take on. But here's the thing, with all that awareness that she has, 
she's so aware of all of her friends who judge their bodies. And you know, she actually comes home many days in tears, crying or really upset, close to tears because her friend Clara thinks she's, she's fat or whatever. I mean, I don't mean to say any names in case anyone's on the call, but there are, you know, just like these girls are torturing themselves the same way you and I did, Shelly, when we were doing the fitness competitions and all that stuff. And they're only 11 years old. If they're just getting started at 11, I didn't think about that at 11 years old. I probably thought about it around the age of 30 when I started putting on weight. So, wow, I just, it breaks my heart and there's so much more that's possible. And yeah, if you can give this gift to yourself and then give it to other young children or your children or, or other women, I mean, it's just, it's amazing. It's such a wonderful thing to give to people. That's one th reason why I adore you, Shelly. Thank you for bringing that gift to my life. Thank you for helping me transform my body. Thank you for helping me to transform my daughter's life before it became an emergency to transform it for her. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, because unfortunately in today's age with social media and Instagram, there are so many studies that I've seen online, so many parents that I've worked with. I have a group of girls here locally in New Mexico right now. They're all like 15. They're all anorexic. They're all bulimic, and most of their parents don't even know. But this addiction to social media and likes and using filters, again, to have this perfect appearance because all they're seeing on you know, in our day and age, it was like, oh, magazines and movies. And then now today, it's like everybody has it in their hands. So they're constantly in a state of judgment because every time they go on Instagram, they're in a state of judgment. Well, my pictures don't look like that. I didn't get 600 likes. I didn't, you know, my face isn't picture perfect and clear. And so it just takes it to a whole nother level for the younger generation today, which is why it's so, so important to be an example for these young girls and even young boys because young boys are going through it too. Yeah. Where they have to know something else exists. Something else is possible. You don't have to constantly be in that state of comparing yourself to everybody else. So I'm glad to be here. Thank you, Donna, for inviting me to Dallas. I am super, super, super excited to come play with all of you beautiful ladies and introduce you to all these amazing techniques that are just going to, your body's going to thank you. That's all I can say. Your body is just going to like take a deep sigh of relief and be like, Finally, thank you. So we are doing another webinar in September. What is that exactly? Oh my goodness, I, I should know this. Um, I don't <laughs> remember. Look out for all the promotions for it. But in September, we are doing another webinar. And we'll do some more Facebook Lives between now and then too, I'm sure. Well, and also we'll definitely be doing a lot more Facebook Lives. And also um, in the email that we'll be sending out to everyone who did register for this call or for this webinar, you're going to get the recording and then we can also put the dates in there of when our, our, web, our next webinar is and when the classes are and how to register for the classes. Yes, indeed. Do we have any questions? Are you all blissed out? <laughs> Yay, well, thank you all for showing up, for being here, for contributing your energy, for desiring a different possibility with your body, with your life, with your living and reality. Thank you, Donna. And what else is possible? Thank you, what Emily. Why do you look younger every year? <laughs> Sexual energy, baby. <laughs> Okay. Thanks everybody for joining us. Thank you, Shelly. Thank you, Donna. Love you all. Bye. Bye-bye.